and welcome to MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Totera. And also in the ring, we got Godzilla in the red corner, and in the blue corner, we have Kong. And officiating the match is Jack Jaguar! He's not part of the actual fight, nor is he in the movie. Norman just wanted to mention him because it's his favorite. I know. Uh, I know, it's just dumb. <laughs> like, could you just imagine if he was in this movie? I don't know, I couldn't see him in this movie, but I could see him in future movies. But here's the thing, like, I, if he was in here, I want him to look like how he did in the, what, 70s, 60s? Like, I want him to look like that. Yeah. Yep. No no modern changes. That just that. <laughs> that would be just so dumb. Uh, well, even the Ultramans have uh an updated look and whatnot. Yeah. But nah, just Jack or no. Just, just leave him be. <laughs> He's perfect. <laughs> so if you guys have no idea what we're talking about, in this episode we are going to review the two thousand and one film. Godzilla vs. Kong. 2001? Sorry, 2021. <laughs> My bad. Yes. So, in uh, the next epic chapter in the cinematic monsterverse, pits two of the great icons in motion picture history against one another, the fearsome Godzilla and the mighty Kong, with humanity caught in the balance. Wonder Brothers that did not explain anything at all. <laughs> but putting that aside... Um, this movie was fun. This movie was awesome. So, Tara, your first impressions? Oh, man, I I like this movie so much. And actually, like, I, I did say before I did like Godzilla King of the Monsters, but it focused a bit too much on the humans still. And there was a couple of times where they show a fight and then they go to the humans. It's like, come on, we want to see the fight. Well, at least here, it's a perfect balance between seeing the humans and how they get some action. And you see the monsters fighting and it doesn't cut off. You actually see the fight. But here's the thing, like, I, I have to ask, like, uh, you, you watch all of the series, the uh, more than Toho, um, not really more than, the New Line, or New Line, was it? No, um, Legends, yes. You've seen all of the legendary monsters, right? So, for me, I only catch this one, like, I, I really sat down and saw this one. But I had general ideas on uh, King Kong, King of the Monsters, and so on. And uh, Kong, like I, I have general ideas. Yeah. But with this one, did did this feel like the monster had equal screen time with the humans? Because I feel like Kong only had more screen time other than Godzilla, because Godzilla felt like he was there and he's gone, or look, he's there and destroying things. Yeah, Kong did have a lot more screen time than him because. I think they were focusing a lot more on how Kong wants to be with his family and then he returns to Hollow Earth and then all that stuff. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> I, I think the synopsis from uh, Wonder Brothers didn't really do justice or didn't really explain anything. So, I, I'm going to try and do the synopsis via what I can remember. Yeah. And it's simply like this. Uh, the bad guy of the show wants to siphon some power and the power source they want is in the Hollow Earth. What's Hollow Earth? That was mentioned in Godzilla 2, right? Or 1? I think that was mentioned in 2. Yes. So it was mentioned in Godzilla 2. So, the, like I mentioned before, the bad guy wants to go to Hollow Earth to siphon the powers. So, for them to go to Earth, they need to recruit Kong because Kong is somehow um, have DNA imprint and whatnot. You know, like Salmon, how they go back to their source of birth and whatnot. So, uh, they want to do that for Kong so they can bring him to Hollow Earth. So, <clears throat> while they try to do that, Godzilla is on a rampage, destroying the city. But... You might ask, hey, what happened? I thought Godzilla didn't do that. He was friend to the humans and whatnot, a protector of the earth and so on. But nope, he's on a rampage. I'm guessing that his pre-order got cancelled by GameStop. I would be mad too. 
Yeah, well, I mean, I'd be mad too if my pre-order got cancelled. <laughs> mm-hmm, without further warning, yes. So, Godzilla is mad because game stop. <laughs> uh, can't really say much because it would be spoilers. <clears throat> yes. So, uh, if you guys have not watched this episode yet, pause here and go do so because it is a really fun monster movie. Welcome back. So... We got no idea how to do this, um, scene by scene or teams, and you know, honestly, I got no idea because it's been so long since we really did a movie review. So I'm just going to go by scenes and speed things up because I, I think I messed up the speed things up kind of deal. Yeah. All right. So anywho, we start off with the movie with uh, King Kong waking up from his nap and taking a shower. <laughs> <laughs> I did not expect that, you know? Like, uh, went into the movie theaters, hoping to see Monster Fight, but nope, nope, nope. Saw so Gorilla bathing. What? I mean, that's the circle of life, you know. <laughs> he, yeah, but I wasn't expecting that. I, I, I was, I was just waiting for a fart from the guy. <laughs> uh, boy, so anywho, Godzilla wakes up, uh, wash his body and whatnot, and. Meets up with a girl. This girl is kind of, uh, what you call this, uh, one of the citizens of the city that Godzilla inhabits and whatnot. And uh, they have a link. They have a connection. So Godzilla takes a tree and hurls it to the sky, mm, Kong. only to re- yes, Kong. My bad. <laughs> uh, only to reveal that. He is trapped in a simulation. Oh no! And uh, he's outside Skull Island, and oh, he's trapped in there. Oh, stuff. And the reason why he's trapped is that they're trying to separate him from Kong because there's a prophecy that says that if the two titans meet, they will fight and the world will be caught in the middle. Oh no, that's bad. And they make a good explanation on why, too. Oh, do do explain, because I forgot. <laughs> well, the reason why they say that if Kong and Godzilla meet each other, because they're both Alpha Titans. Pretty much back in King of the Monsters, when Godzilla is an Alpha, but then King Ghidorah came in, and he's an Alpha. It's like, you can't have two Alphas, so they fight. That, that's not good. That's not good. So, they trap in him here and stuff. And the girl, no sign language. The, the little girl... Uh, the well, one of the professors from the previous movies adopted her, and uh, the girl says Kong is angry, like he is piss mad. So we get into the intro and whatnot, and yep, uh, they show the two titans, like they show uh, backstories on what uh, Kong versus T Rex, and then like uh, King Kong versus King Ghidorah. You mean Godzilla? And Yes, oh, man, I'm not going to get used to this. <laughs> so, they show the title screen and yay, that's done. So, we, we meet up with this podcaster who has a, uh, what, I won't say QAnon, but some kind of conspiracy theory kind of uh, shindig about the Apex company and how it's evil and whatnot. And let's just say that he's been having too much, what you call this, um, conspiracy in his head and whatnot. And let's just say that he expects a lot of things in the company and wants to expose them for the evil that they are. So he snoops around and sees that, oh, um, this company is doing some shady stuff. That's bad. That's really bad. And while he's doing all of this, we see Kong heading to, well, the factory and kind of Blasting it to smithereens. You mean Godzilla? Oh, no. Why? Ah, oh, man. Thank you. This is going to be a running joke, ain't it? <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. Pretty sure if Silver was here, he'd be like, Norman, why do you keep messing this up? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. So, Godzilla comes along and destroys the uh, factory. And <clears throat> he destroys a wall. And the guy that has the conspiracy podcast... Uh, reveals that um, well he sees that oh there's this uh, machine it looks like an eye kind of thing and it's pulsing and that's not good like well, what is that thing but before he could really 
exploring stuff, he just runs away before his life and whatnot. So, in the news, uh, it states that Godzilla no longer Titan Savior, 8 dead, Dizzy's injured in Apex cybernetic attack, blah, 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 and so on. And the girl from the previous movie, she is, well, she tries and figure out because Godzilla is not evil. Godzilla is a good guy. Oh no, I must go see that and talk about this to him. And that doesn't really want to pay attention because that is busy trying to save lives. And girl listens to podcasts and yeah, let's just say she's cuckoo for Cuckoo Puffs too. <clears throat> and I'm going to pause here. So, Tara, what do you think? Well, from what we've got so far, it was... it Obviously, you know, I like the, the action of seeing Godzilla destroy things and everything. And then it also brings the question, it's like, why is he attacking? What, what, why is he like this? And again, it's, yeah. we can't really say much because it's just a setup to what's going to happen later on. But it just basically, like, Right now, it's just all questions like, why is he doing this? Who is, what's going on? What's this guy's purpose? And all that. Okay, but before uh, we carry on and stuff, I-, I need to ask a few questions because, uh, A, I haven't seen the previous movie to get uh, the shindig and whatnot. So, you are going to be my guide in this whole uh, legendary movie, monster movie. So, all right. uh, in the first movie, uh, Godzilla... Yes. Uh, what was he there? Like, was he destroying stuff, and why did he do it? Oh, uh, he wasn't destroying stuff in the first Godzilla movie. In the first movie, there's these creatures uh, that I guess have the power to launch an uh, EMP pulse. Mm-hmm. So every time they took a stomp, the electricity was shut down. And I think Godzilla, you know, he's uh, enjoying his home on Earth and whatnot, and they're disturbing his peace. So he's like, okay, I gotta set things straight. So he doesn't really destroy buildings, and if he did, I'm pretty sure he didn't mean to. But he was just there trying to help the people. While destroying a few cities and killing a few dozen people, okay. <laughs> yes. He's big. He he won't notice. Yeah, uh, he, he didn't mean to. <laughs> so, basically, he was just protecting his turf then. Yes. Okay, so these monsters, were they from Earth or from space? Uh, that I don't know. They never... I, don't, mm. I I think they did mention where they're from, but it's been a while since I've seen that movie. But basically, they're OC monsters then. Yes. So, okay, protecting turf. Got it, got it, got it. But did the humans um see it that way? Mm, one of them did. Ah, okay. So, uh, they're still iffy, iffy. Okay, what about part two? So, in part two... Pretty much the same thing, almost, except later on. Like, Godzilla was just, you know, mind his own business. But then, once they released uh, King Ghidorah slash Monster Zero, the, the Godzilla sensed it, and he's like, there's another Alpha on this place. I can't allow that, because he's the Alpha. So, wait, uh, when did Ghidorah came along? I thought he was from space or whatnot. Like, how did he appear? He was frozen in a huge block of ice, and then the they detonated it. They de- they put plant bombs all around it, and then they detonate the bomb. And then he came out of the ice. Ah, all right. So, in what? Godzilla 2, who, who appeared? Like, there's what? Ghidorah, was Rodan there? Yep, Rodan was there. Hmm, okay. Mofra? Yeah, no? Martha. Wow. And so it was. A... Yeah, it was pretty much just uh, King Ghidorah, Martha, and Rodan. Ah, so it was a jam packed movie. All right, all right, all right. And Rodan, like, was he Alpha too, or what? No, he wasn't. So what was his role there? I think he was just a little minion because I know at at first he was his own monster or whatever. Like he would just do his own thing. But then after mm-hmm. once King Ghidorah came around and started, you know, calling the shots and saying how he's the alpha, then he listened to Rodan. But then later on, once Ghidorah was dead, Rodan looks at him and goes, oh, he's the new alpha now. He's the new king. So he bows down to Godzilla. Ah, all right. Okay, so, all right, all right, all right. So that's the whole synopsis. All right. So basically, from the very beginning, uh, Godzilla was... A savior then. Alright, so in this one, uh, people were confused because there's no big monster. Why is he doing this? Alright. It just makes me laugh though with how Godzilla saved the people like two times 
and all of a sudden in the trailer the guy's like we need kong he's the only one that can save us it's like godzilla saved you twice now you need kong yeah well like well, why because godzilla is the killing us ah <laughs> Uh, that's big to differ. What happened to Kong in those movies in between, right? Hmm. Yeah. But anywho, um, I'm going to continue on. So, we meet up with a scientist who is down on his luck because, well, everybody thinks he's a, whatchamacallit, crazy loon. But the bad guy here, I'm just calling him bad guy because he's the bad guy, come on. I, I, I don't remember saying, like, we don't really care. So, <clears throat> uh, the bad guy here says, I believe in your thing and we have the, whatchamacallit, uh, data to prove it and whatnot. And your brother went down to Hollow Earth, right? And the professor here says, yeah, he did, but he got crushed by the gravity. So, yep. So, what a, uh, bad guy says, I have a ship. The ship can withstand the gravitational pull, blah, blah, blah. And he's in it. But we need to get Kong on board. The guy says, okay, I'll try and do it. Yes, I- I'll try. So <coughs> with that, he meets up with a professor that is handling Kong and talks to him uh, talks to her about uh, needing to go uh, get Kong, go to Hollow Earth and whatnot, blah, 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 blah. And somehow, the... Uh, does she have some name? I, I, what I, do don't, you remember? I don't remember a lot of the people's names. <laughs> okay, so female professor agrees to this, but the daughter to the female professor says... I think this is a bad idea. I mean, like, really, like, this is a bad idea. So with that, they put Kong on a ship and tries to bring him to, uh, what you call this, the North Pole, avoiding all of Godzilla's known route. So they sedate the sedate Kong and whatnot, and uh, they seem so, <clears throat> like, they just try, let's just try. Kong is not too happy about this. And yeah, the daughter for the bad guy comes along, supervises the whole thing and wants to make sure that they get the job done. So night falls and Kong is none too happy because it's raining outside, he's chained up and he's cranky. Uh, the daughter to the professor, I'm going to call him, I'm going to call her girl, uh, notice this and goes to Kong and Everybody, the adults are shocked by this. Oh no, girl's gonna get killed. Oh no, this is bad. And the girl communicates with Kong and she speaks sign language to it and whatnot. And well, the, everybody's shocked that what Kong can sign language? Oh no, what, what is this? This is. Oh, no, everybody's shocked. So the. Yep, yeah, and then we shift to the daughter to the guy. Oh man, I am not doing great with names. I wish I had written down names before this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anywho, uh, the girl, uh, the daughter to the army guy or whatever it is, uh, grabs a van and goes to the podcaster's place, knowing that <coughs> he. Uh, knowing that she has info for the guy and uh, meets up with him and yeah, they, they discuss and talk and the podcaster brings him to, sorry, brings them to his workplace, the factory. So, wow, this is just all over the place. Here's the thing. This movie tells stories in two parts. Like, they tell story from uh, the human's perspective from... Kong, and they also tell the human's perspective from Godzilla. So it's one of those things where in the movie, yeah, you can have a coherent story like that, but in a review, when you're trying to summarize and stuff, it is all over the place. Yeah. Especially if you want to speed things up. But anywho, um, we return to Kong. 
uh, professor says, why didn't you tell me that you could sign language with Kong? And the deaf girl says Kong wanted to be a secret and whatnot. And they argue, suddenly, uh, the ship is under attack. And it is Godzilla. He noticed the other alpha and uh, wants to uh, take him on and whatnot. So, the, what you call this? The professor guy uh, turns off the chains and now we have a rumble. Yeah, yes. we, we get to see Kong versus Godzilla. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was a great fight. This was a great fight. Um, not going to go through it scene by scene, but let's just say that uh, Kong got his ass whooped by Godzilla. Yep, and yep. Godzilla won. The end. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, it ain't the end, but uh, it was round one and Kong lost. So it's 1-0, 1-0. Yep. There's going to be a rematch soon. <laughs> so um, they decide that, okay, uh, for Kong to stop chasing or attacking them, they have to play dead. So they turn off all of the engines and all of the power. And the military guy says, okay, this is stupid. And I, this is stupid and dumb. But I believe in, I believe you guys. Because if not, we're going to die. Whatever it is. Uh, do if we don't. Uh, damn if we do. Damn if we don't. Something like that. I think yeah, something like that. I closed there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they turn off everything. And Godzilla says, okay, uh, close enough. Job done. All right, I'm going to go. I'm happy. So they do. They, they go. So, we go back to the podcaster and we see that they travel to stuff, they look at place and when they, when he brings to the eye machine kind of thingy, it's gone. Oh no, where could it be? And when they explore the place, they see a elevator going to the underground and they see stuff, something like what... <laughs> a machine carrying case and once they go in it is full of eggs for the OC monster the OC monster right which which like, one the original character monster from the first Godzilla no no the, that no it's not the same one oh okay the eggs what in this different? one is uh, the skull crawlers from Kong Skull Island oh okay but wait yeah. how did the girl know about them you know what that's a good question I don't know how she knew that the the eggs were from skull crawlers, unless they had a name on the side of it or something. But at the same time, too, how did they get their hands on this? Maybe that'll be explained in a later movie. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. There's, there's so okay, much so things that need that needs explaining. Yeah, that's true. So, anywho, uh, they got trapped in the shipping unit, and they are going to be shipped to Hong Kong, and that's going to be a long while. Oh, but the method of shipping them is kind of cool. They're using electromagnetic uh, acceleration and whatnot, which is kind of cool. Yeah. I, I think what they used it in bullet trains for Japan, if I'm not mistaken. So. Magnetic lift, something like that. But this is in, done in a uh, more science fiction kind of way, right? Yeah. So, you know, we move back to Kong, and Kong is airlifted with nets. And this reminds me of Kong versus Godzilla in the. Uh, olden movies, except they they didn't use um, helicopters; they just used balloons, <laughs> <laughs> which is dumb. Oh god! So anyway, they drop Kong off in the Antarctic, and Kong is like, "Nah, man, like I ain't going to go in there. Like they they ain't my place." So. They convinced the little girl to talk to Kong, saying that, Yo, bro, over there's your home, so why not go in there? Kong is a bit reluctant and says, ah, You know what, okay, I I'll trust you, I'll trust you. Let's go, let's go. So they all ready up and go into the hole with Kong. So once they do, it's kind of a wild ride, where uh, Kong just swinging from pipe to pipe, and the humans write their machine and goes through the whatever it is they do. And they end up in the middle of Earth, which is kind of 
cool because gravity in there is nuts. Yes. So we, we see a few monsters here and there. One ship gets blown up, like usual, you know, the sacrificial lamb kind of deal. So is there any monster? Like, do you know that monster or anything like that? Uh, what monster? The monster that Kong killed, like the flying thing. Uh, I know they had a name for it. Oh, and I think it's right here. Yes, they're called war bats. They're OCs then? Yes. Ah, okay. So, anywho, Kong kind of shows his dominance and destroys the monsters. And we see that this universe or this world is uh, crazy because there's a lot of there's a lot of monsters. Let's just say that there's a lot of monsters and things are crazy. <clears throat> then we see that I mentioned before gravity is not um, right, but they show it here where uh, Kong needs to go to the sky and he jumps as hard as he can and the gravity turns him upside down. So he's now in the sky and so like that. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's fun that's fun to see we go back to Kong's storyline so the podcaster and the girl are in their shipping container and they reach Hong Kong they somehow stumble upon the monster facility and it seems that they're doing a test over there they release the kind of machine and it is revealed to be Kiryu. Oh no. That's not Kiryu. It's not Kiryu? No, it's Mecha Godzilla. <laughs> Same thing, right? Mm, not really. Okay, do explain. Because to me, Mecha Godzilla is Kiryu. Well, I know that, um, like they call, I'm pretty sure they just thought Kiryu was maybe a stupid name or something like that. So they just, they just went with Mecha Godzilla. Because another thing, too, is that. There was a Mecha Godzilla made from bad people, and then Kiryu was made from the good people. So I guess since this Mecha Godzilla is bad, I guess they just stuck with Mecha Godzilla instead of calling him Kiryu. Okay, so uh, where did Kiryu came from? Uh, that I don't exactly remember. Because to me, Kiryu is awesome. He's not only uh, Mecha Godzilla, but he's also um, really bad as Yakuza in the Yakuza series. <laughs> but anywho. Uh, okay. okay, so, so uh, let's go for... Uh, I was going to say, I just looked up the information. So apparently, uh, the, the nickname is Kiryu, but he's still me- named Mechagodzilla. Ah, alright. Why did they name him Kiryu? Because another thing too strange. is that I do remember that in one of the Godzilla games, he was named. He was also nicknamed Mechagodzilla 3. What, for Kiryu or...? For Kiryu, yeah. Oh, so Kiryu is... His nickname is Mechagodzilla 3. Yeah. Oh man. Okay. Whew. Okay. So anywho, I'm just going to stick gonna with say one more thing. Because <laughs> it says this is just this is a short one. It says here in the description, Kiryu's nickname is derived from Kiryu, meaning machine dragon. Kiryu's legal name is simply Mecha Godzilla. <laughs> wait, wait. His legal name? Yep. Oh man, that sounds so dumb. Like, oh, <laughs> Kiryu has a legal name, like. Wait, what? <laughs> but when you think about it, oh yeah, in terms of licensing and whatnot, yeah. <laughs> because Kiryu is hard to license because Kiryu is a real person's name. And that can't be marketable. Yeah. Mm. But anyhow, I'm just going to call him Mecha then. <laughs> so Mecha, so they reveal, oh Mecha, he is a badass robot monster here. Oh right, he's, he's going to fight up with uh, one of the monsters that K Capture and Release, the podcaster and the girl and boy are shocked that oh my god, what they've been keeping monsters here and then they run and hide and good thing that they aren't squash. That that's that can be bad. That can be very bad. So while the testing is being done, Godzilla sensed that yo, what 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 is this? Like this is not this is not right. This is not right. Um I I I, I need to Go and go to Hong Kong and um, see what the crap is this. And the military guy, the dad, he noticed that yo Godzilla is changing course. He's heading to Hong Kong to the Apex facility. That's not right. Oh wow! 
And before you can get a resolution to that, we go back to Kong's storyline. Oh, boys. <laughs> you see, do you see what I mean by uh, you getting excited for one part of the story and then suddenly getting pulled right to another? Like, <sighs> it's one of those things. So, anywho, uh, with Kong, we see that, okay, he discovered his uh, home away from home, his um, ancestral village. He sees that there's no one there, but there are certain things like weapons and whatnot. And he takes out an axe and claims it as his own. He sits on the throne and says that, yo, this is my town now. And also there's bad kind of creature monster. But... Those are nothing, those are nothing. They're, they're just there to, you know, decorate the place. Yeah, just to make it look nice, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Then we go back to the Kong... Uh, sorry, Godzilla storyline. <sighs> uh, this is getting tiring. But anywho, in the Apex Cybernetics Hong Kong division, we see the podcaster and the girl trying to escape, but somehow, the girl wants to explore the place and sees that, hey, what's that oh it is a skull what skull is that it is a monster skull it seems like the skull of Ghidorah was it yes Mm. so we see the pilot piloting Ghidorah from inside the skull and whatnot and uh, Kong is there messing things up so uh, what do I even see here like this is just all over the place um. Yeah. Let, let's just say that Kong. Eh, sorry. Um. Godzilla is messing Hong Kong up because of the Mecha Godzilla. Uh. While in the Middle Earth, we see Kong's axe kind of um vibrates. Not really vibrates, but light up, and he sees a place to pull down the axe and somehow activate some kind of power, and the axe kind of shapes into a form of Godzilla. Oh no! And that seems to attract Godzilla to blast down a laser beam down to Earth. Or Middle Earth. So, yeah, let's just say things get really confusing and really hectic because they get the power source that they need and download it to send to Apex Cybernetics. And you know what? That's pretty interesting because the data transfer from the middle of Earth to Hong Kong is really good. What kind of internet are they using? <laughs> so anywho, um, back on Hong, back to Hong Kong, we see that the bad guy is just telling the uh, pilot to get into the ship and pilot the mecha. But I'm sure the pilot has some issues, right? doing so like is this right like we have the test and everything blah 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 and the bad guy just says just move it so they see that okay um back on kong storyline uh people are getting eaten by monsters and kong defeats the bad guy or the human bad guys uh godzilla blasts down his beam down to Earth because he senses a power similar to his and wants to kind of get rid of it. And well, yeah, let's let's just say that Godzilla laser beams his way down to Middle Earth, giving an escape route for the uh, Kong and his friends. So let's see. Um, uh, I'm trying to trying to get things right. Uh, <laughs> Back on Hong Kong, uh, the podcaster and the girl gets caught by the bad guy. And <clears throat> yeah, they, they get caught. So somehow, Kong gets up to Earth in a jiff. Makes you wonder, makes you still wonder how the gravity works. Yep, and the speed, like the speed of things. But anywho, Kong is in Hong Kong now. And now it's round two, baby. Woo! So we see the battle appears. Like, okay, um, Kong got an advantage because he has weapons, but Godzilla has one up Kong because he has laser beams. So they fight and whatnot. And it's a really fun fight. It's a really fun fight. Yes. Um, uh, in between, we see that Kong uses his axe 
and shove it down Godzilla's throat. This reminds me of the Kong vs. Godzilla movie where King Kong grabs a tree and shove it down Godzilla's throat. <laughs> oh, he's telling him to eat his vegetables. Oh, yeah, true, true, true. But it, it, it seems like that that makes things... Uh, how do I put this? It makes the... Uh, uh, what's the word? Easter eggs fun. Because if you've seen that and if you see this, like, oh, I remember that in the previous thing. Oh, that was fun. Would you remember that? Yep, I remember that. <laughs> Yeah, so anywho, uh, the fight doesn't go well for Kong. Even with the weapon advantage that he has, uh, Godzilla is still stronger than him. And uh, Godzilla beats the crap out of him. And <coughs> uh, he's what? Uh, Go- Godzilla is almost... Sorry, no, Kong is almost dead because uh, Kong is much stronger than him. You mean Godzilla? Yes, thank you. (laughs) Oh man, this is going to get worse when we go on. So let's see. Um, Godzilla screams at Kong's face saying, I am the Alpha. And Godzilla says, no, no, Kong says, no, I am Alpha, but whatever. Uh, So he's kind of dead, I think. Back in the bad guys there, the podcaster and the girl and the boy are... Uh, are getting monologued by the bad guy. Uh, power source for the bad guy is complete and the pilot is being integrated into the, well, um, mecha. But somehow, the mecha has its own thing and is dead and being electrocuted by the mecha. It seems that the skull of King Ghidorah is taking control of Mechagodzilla now. So, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. While the bad guy is monologuing, the podcaster sees that, oh, whoa, 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 what is up with the Mecha? So they kind of hide. And this is one of those lines I like. Uh, it, it's, it's funny for me, but he, uh, the podcaster says, Oh man, I really want to hear that full story about his monologue. <laughs> it's just silly, but it's so much fun. <clears throat> but anywho, um, before we go to the final part, um, Tara, what do you think? I I know I've been talking a lot here. Well, I want to say, like, I just I'm just happy that we get both actions from the monsters and the people. Like, you got the I don't know how to say I don't remember much of the people. But you got the girl doing the sign language, and all of a sudden Kong can talk. And then you see them follow Kong to Hollow Earth, and all of a sudden, bam, a new monster we haven't seen before. And then all of a sudden, Godzilla senses Kong below, so he just launches a super atomic breath, makes a giant hole. It's like, wow, this is really, really awesome. (laughs) I know. This movie is really fun. Like, yo. Like, the human parts are just, like, fillers, but the monsters, like, oh, yeah. those, Those are the... Those are fun. Those are fun. So that's all? Like anything more to add? Mm, not really. Like, I I I don't know what else to say about what we what we covered so far. <laughs> <laughs> all righty then. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna carry on. So while that happens, Kiryu, oh sorry, Mechagodzilla reveals himself to the world and stomps on everything, and Godzilla sees this and starts the battle. And Mechagodzilla has a few things up his arsenal, like rocket launchers and whatnot and stuff. Like, Godzilla is getting pummeled by Mecha. Like, Mecha has a, f- a lot of awesome things going for him. And while that's going on, uh, we go back to Kong, and Kong is dying. Kong is almost dead. And uh, the professor decides to use the ship as a, what should we call this? Uh, defibrillator. And decides, yeah, he uses the defibrillator to revive Kong. Uh, he does the whole thing and it is a success. The kid that can sign language to Kong says that Godzilla is not his uh, enemy and tells him to help him help Kong defeat the enemy, Mecha. So, uh, with Kong getting uh, Kong getting up and getting ready to fight, 
while uh what you call this uh back in the apex cybernetic center uh the girl and the podcaster tries to stop things over there uh i'm not sure what they did but did they do anything uh yeah they um they tried to stop mechagodzilla from working but they typed in the wrong password so many times so it's one of those things where it's like you've entered the wrong password so many times you can't go in and then after and then after later on um i don't remember what the guy said about the um, the bottle of the uh, the little vase i don't, I don't know i know it has a mm. it's called something okay but anyways, the kid grabs the bottle, and he pours it all over the controls, and Mechagodzilla starts breaking down. Like, his tail stops working. <sighs> okay, so, all right. Oh, man, that, that was dumb. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> ah, okay, let, uh, uh, let, let's just try and recap. Oh, man. So, uh, Godzilla and Mecha fight. Uh, Kong, and, Kong, Kong comes in and beats down Mecha, but Mecha is too strong because he has tech working for him. So, yeah, the the two got beat down and whatnot. And, like you mentioned before, Terra, uh, the boy grabs the bottle of, let's just say, whiskey and pours it onto the machine. And that's now... Uh, computer don't work that way. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just assuming here. But somehow... With that, uh, Mecha gets a bit, well, um, disoriented. Like, his system is starting to shut down because um, communication with main PC is dead. So, uh, Kong and Godzilla beats down Mecha and they win. It seems that, what, Kong and Godzilla have a mutual respect for one another and they kind of call it truce yeah and then Godzilla goes back to the ocean while Kong goes back to hollow earth and with that the movie ends and if you sit for the end hoping there is a what you might call this end credits says to be you because there's no end credits (laughs) ha 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 those fools (laughs) I am one of those fools (laughs) <laughs> boys you thought there was going to be an end credits yeah man like come on uh, in what Kong they had Mothra in the previous one they had a few come on like yeah right no yeah yeah you're right so you would expect that oh this one should have an end credit because what um, we might have Jet Jaguar <laughs> well I know after I saw the movie uh, I read an article about uh, the movie because it's like, how come there are no end credits? I read an article. Apparently, mm-hmm. it, there is a semi end credits, but apparently the, direct, the director didn't want it to be an exact end credits. So the hidden end credits, it's somewhere during the movie, not at the end. Oh man, that's dumb. Yeah. But here's the thing from what I heard also that uh, going into Godzilla vs. Kong. Uh, they were a bit iffy because in the second Godzilla movie, uh, what was it called again? Godzilla... Godzilla King of the Monsters? Yeah. The first one was just Godzilla, right? Yeah, the first one was just Godzilla, but since there's other movies that are just called Godzilla, <laughs> they call this one Godzilla 2014 because that's yeah. the year he came out. All right. So anyway, uh, for King of the Monsters, um, the reception for it was not what Wonder Brothers wanted. So they kind of got cold feet with Godzilla vs. Kong and kind of wrapped things up to kind of have an ending. But it seems that Godzilla vs. Kong was a hit. So now they have to backpedal and stuff, you know. Because think about it. There's Mothra. There's Rodan. Where were they? Yeah. Godzilla could have easily called a helper or something. Yeah, I mean, like, he could just do his little dance and stuff. Remember? Yeah, yeah like... <laughs> <laughs> oh. I mean, uh, the, the movie is great as it is, but the problem with the movie is that it is a crossover movie, and usually crossover movies have this thing where 
um, have these things where both creatures can't look like uh, can't look weak, especially Godzilla. Godzilla cannot look weak. No, nope. and that's why the jobber was Kong. If you really look at it, it was what two nil. Like Kong got beaten up so bad that he almost died, and in the third in the third match, like he had to work with Kong to just defeat Mecha, and Kong, Godzilla when he was fighting Mecha, he was holding his own. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, so so basically, like this is one of those things where Godzilla was strong, even with uh even fighting Kiryu. Ah, that's the thing I was thinking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> nice gift. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, this is thing I was calling out his friends. <laughs> but let's see, we, we were saying, yeah. So overall, this movie was a lot of fun. Okay, so let's break it down. Final thoughts, Terra. I just really love this movie. Like, you got two iconic monsters facing each other yet again. I mean, obviously, you know, in twenty twenty one, this is. To new people, it's like, wow, this is so new and this is so cool. But it's like, yeah, there, there's actually two versions, except one's called King Kong vs. Godzilla and this one's called Godzilla vs. Kong. Yeah, there, there's a... um, they, they wanted to kind of do a anniversary version of the movie way back when, but they couldn't get the license for King Kong, so they made uh, Mecha Kong. Yeah. But somehow, yeah, let, let's just say that <laughs> licensing and stuff. Mecha Kong, you've seen that one, right? <laughs> yeah. But uh, carry on. I was going to say that uh, I just liked it and I really liked how the action, they don't cut off the action of the monsters fighting and then cut to the humans and then cut back. It's like, no, we actually get to focus on the monster fight and it's like, okay, we're done with that. Focus on the people now. And it's, another thing too is that they just open up so many opportunities to future Monsterverse movies because... Back in Kong Skull Island, he was kind of very small. And now this one, he's very big and more hairy. It's like, well, wait, where's the time gap? They're going to probably have movies to fill in that gap. Yeah, and the movie that filled in the gap was one more Godzilla movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so so it was pretty interesting. Like, uh, the Kong movie was a really interesting one where it it held, it held its own as its own movie. But because the introduction of Mofra in the end credits... Like, oh, crap. Like, we're going to get a versus movie. Oh, snaps. Yes. So how that's going to look in whatever it is. <clears throat> so, yeah. So, so yeah. Um, okay. Uh, I remember way back when, uh, while we were doing the podcast, uh, one of the Patreon special thingies, uh, you told me that your uh, SO or your fiancé... Uh, slept through some movies and whatnot. So Aquaman. Ah yes, Aquaman. So what about this one? Did she slept through Kong vs. Godzilla? Nope. Ah. Was she invested? Like the, okay, how how much of a fan is she for the whole monster series? Or was she just watching? Well she she was just watching because she hasn't actually seen any of the Godzilla movies nor Kong Skull Island. But she mm-hmm. saw this and then she's like, okay, I'm interested. Ah, okay. So the action was there and... Okay, that's cool, that's cool. So, yeah. it was good. Yes. <clears throat> All right, yeah, that's good, that's good. That's good. So, uh, overall thoughts then? Like, uh, I think I cut into your bit. Well, Sorry. I was basically finishing up saying how I like the movie and how it opens up to other MonsterVerse movies. Ah, uh, all right. So, as for me, this movie was a lot of fun. Uh, like, just watching the whole thing was just... Awesome, like Godzilla here hold his own. Kong also had stuff. I mean, the the thing is that where do we go from here? Because I am pretty into this movie. Like, I want to know more. I I want to see where do we go. And the thing is, like, what do we? Where do we go? That's the thing. Uh, because if we go back to the classics, there's going to be Mecha. What Mecha uh, King Ghidorah, but mm-hmm. I doubt we're gonna have that because where's the justification of getting that? Because if I'm not mistaken, uh, it involves time traveling. What? What? Yeah. So yeah, I, I don't think we're gonna get that. So 
What do? What are we going to get? Like, do you have any predictions? Mm, not really. I don't really have any predictions. Okay, so if no, if not predictions, um, what about wish list? Like, who do you? Which ones do you want to come and see? Oh, I w- honestly, at the end of okay, so at the end of the King of the Monsters movie, the end credits, I honestly thought they were going to make uh, Mecha King Kid- Me- Mecha King Ghidorah, but mm-hmm. they didn't. They just took the skull. It's like, oh, okay then. But then uh, after, it's like, um, <laughs> like I don't know, because there's so many things. Like I know that there's also the monster Destroyer because he was the monster that basically almost killed Godzilla if it wasn't for the military coming in. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then there's also his, um, because I know back in the old Godzilla movies, he had a rival slash ally, Anguirus, but oh. they didn't include him in here. It's like, huh, okay. So, <laughs> wait, what's up with that? <laughs> mm, okay, so, would you, okay, uh, for the future monster movies, would you like to see another crossover or, uh, okay, not really crossover, but okay, crossover team up kind of thing, like Godzilla and Kong versus something, or would you just want to see Godzilla? Uh, I'm I'm good with seeing both. I like all monsters. Because the thing is, um, we have Hollow Earth, and Hollow Earth can introduce us to a lot of other monsters like Angress and whatnot because. The thing is, um, they haven't really specify uh, who comes from where and how. So with Hollow Earth opening, there is a chance that we might get uh, some of the other monsters. Uh, yeah. The, the, and if I'm not mistaken, um, King Ghidorah, he was frozen in ice at the Antarctic? Yep. So see... Um, Wait, previous movie he was in space, right? Space alien kind of thing? Yes, in the previous movie he was a space monster. And in this movie they say he's also from space as well. But I guess in this one he's on Earth, been frozen in ice the whole time. Oh man, that's just gonna be dumb. (laughs) They could just say, no, he came from Hollow Earth. They'll they'll solve a lot of problems. But no, no, no. No. But anywho, um, yeah, movie's awesome. Movie's awesome. But one thing I kind of am sad is that we didn't get to see Godzilla do a double drop kick. <laughs> That'd be great, right? Yeah. <laughs> like him uh, dropping kick and uh, rocketing his way. Like, yeah, that would be fun. Uh, but anywho, uh, with that, I say you should go watch the movie because it's a lot of fun. You too, Tara? Yes, you should watch the movie. It's also a lot of fun. Even if you haven't seen the previous movies, pretty sure this will get you hooked in and it makes you curious to be like, oh, this is pretty good. I wonder what happened in previous movies. Mm-hmm. True, true. So anyway, um, next week... Well, I haven't told Tara anything about what we're going to do next week. So uh, here's the thing. I-, I think that we're going to take a short break, a short one session break from recording you know just to get our bearings right just get just just to relax you know like uh, me having a bit of uh, well I'm I'm tired I, I, I'm a bit tired so I need to get breaks and yeah because the way you are right now it's midnight right yeah and stuff like I, I just need to recoup my strength and whatnot and if I'm not mistaken your doing a new job and the new job is kind of tiring and you're not used to it yet? No, uh, not really. Not really. It, All right, no problem. Like, okay. I'm not really used to it yet. <laughs> ah, yes, okay. So, let's just take a break so we can get our bodies used to... Uh, well, for me, I, I need to get rest. For you, you need to get your body acclimated to your new job. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And also, you're having a flu or sore throat or something like that? <laughs> I think it's just a common sickness. Uh, right on cue. <laughs> yeah. So, anywho, yeah, so we're going to take a one session break. Uh, yeah. It, it won't be long. I mean, it's it's just one session. One session is, what, uh, two weeks for us, or something like that? Yeah, I think so. 
Yeah. So we'll be we'll be right back with more ponies and whatever we're going to do next time. Exactly. Yep. We are humans. We we need rest. <laughs> yes, we ain't monsters here. Yeah, I know. Could you just imagine us being monsters? We'd be lazy. <laughs> We'd just be sleeping. Yeah. yeah I, I want to be King Ghidorah. Put me on ice. <laughs> <laughs> But anywho, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com. You can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at the Mia Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Uh, Tara, where can the good people find you? Well, the good people can find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Tortero1324, or they could just do a Google search and I'll be on all platforms, <laughs> including my Patreon page. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Go check it out, guys. Also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon and stay up to date. And also, stay tuned and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyLive.com. Links are in the show notes. So, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com. show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Jeffrey, myself, like, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. And I have been Tortera. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Bye-bye. I'm just thinking, like, for the next Kong, sorry, um, Godzilla movie, I want him to pull out all the stops from his previous thing, man. Like, the... Uh, jumping, drop kick, his kids and whatnot. Like, oh my god, could you just imagine Kong Ju- uh, Godzilla Jr.? I mean, maybe, but I don't know. Maybe some people find that too unrealistic. It's a monster movie. That by <laughs> itself is already. Yeah, we'll just have to <sighs> wait and see what they do. Yeah, that would be that would be dumb. Like, you know, the the the, the double drop kick that that kills me, man. Like that that is just <laughs> so great. I just love that. I just love that gif. Well, don't forget the uh, one where Godzilla is flying through the air with his atomic breath. <laughs> <laughs> you know that what that, that, how they they should put that in the movie like that solve his problem. Of, oh, I need to get up to the sky. How do I do it? When fighting um, Rodan or something like that. Oh man, that that would be dumb and good. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, bye-bye. Bye.